This is my video response for the vocabulary evaluation, uh, the vocabulary study evaluation that we did. It's called Educational Language Practices Described by Preschool Teachers in Norwegian Kindergartens. Here it is. I don't know if it's backward from your side, but here it is. It was done in 2018, so it's very recent. Um, in Norway, the kindergartens are actually preschools. And I know we do K through 12, but I think that um, preschool language learning is important for kids when they get to kindergarten. So um, I thought this was important. This also includes a lot of vocabulary learning within the language development that the preschool teachers do in their classrooms. So I thought it was relevant. Um, so in Norway, language learning is a high priority and it's increasingly getting important and their um, populations who are going to preschool are getting higher and higher. It used to be 40%, now it's it's roughly 80% of children entering kindergarten have gone to preschool. Um, so it, this study that I, I looked at was part of a longitudinal study that focused on early childhood education and care. And in the longitudinal study, they did um, assessments on the children. It's called the Infant Toddler Environment Rating Scale, I-T-E-R-S. And they did that with all the kids. And um, they took four of the classes that got high scores on this test. They either got good or excellent. They took four of these classes, and they um, wanted to see what the teachers' um, descriptions of how they support and promote children's language development was. So um, it is a qualitative study. So they actually interviewed the teachers. So let me say again, the purpose was to examine Norwegian kindergarten staff's description of how they support and promote children's language development. And the question was, what characterizes educational language practices as described by preschool teachers in kindergartens with high quality scores on ITERSR? So this is a case study. Um, it was built on interviews with six preschool teachers, and they took it, like I said, from four preschools with really high scores on that assessment. Um, in addition to the interviews, they used field notes um, to support the interviews. <clears throat> um, let's see. So the interviews they used were semi-structured in-depth interviews and they wanted to hear um, the teachers perspectives and um, actually they, they use the interviews to record each preschool teachers perspectives and to ensure common focus in all the conversations so they wanted it to be semi-structured so it wasn't just talking talking they had actual questions they asked but they left it really open-ended so the teachers could um, go as deep as they want and give as much detail as they want um, so the, the interviews were based on four themes work on language educational planning tools for language assessment and professional competence. So an example question would be, how do you work with language stimulation in your group? And give some examples. Um, they transcribed the interviews and they had a whole system of how they transcribed them. They read through them multiple times. They looked for patterns. Um, then they came up with um, topics from these patterns and then they, they made broad categories from these patterns. Um, and they came up with five categories from the empirical data. And those were child-centered conversations, rich and varied vocabulary, storytelling and book reading, knowledge on children's competences, and integrated multidisciplinary curriculum. Um, and so for the child-centered conversations, the preschool teachers 
basically said that they work that work on language just happens in everyday conversation and the staff is used as role models for um for language so it's just kind of a natural thing that just happens on a daily basis they just do it all day long um, for the rich and contextualized vocabulary again everyday activities they use rich and varied vocabulary um, with the students so that they, they could build the vocabularies of the students um, they did storytelling so all the the teachers use different artifacts to help the students understand the words better and the concepts um, they knew the children's levels of language competence to begin with so that they could build on that. And um, they planned and used a curriculum. They thought that was important to actually do planning, to act actively plan out how they were going to involve language in, in um, everyday classroom activities. So what they found with the teachers was that they're responsive and sensitive to children's attempts to communicate. That, as we said, the work on the language is contextualized in formal situations and with the children in the informal situations throughout the day. So if they're playing dress up, the teachers are actually talking to them and building their vocabulary as they go. Um, situated and diverse strategies are used. So they did vocabulary training by verbalizing the actions, adding words, introducing concepts, um, extending conversations, supporting conversations that the children were having, and then doing story time using objects and artifacts, um, realia is what we would have called it in ESL. Um, and then planning for learning was important to these teachers. Um, they ha there was actually a national curricula for um, language development, so they used that, and then um, they used assessment tools at individual and group levels. So um, these teachers actually planned out how to create a holistic and rich learning environment for the children. They value working with language stimulation in everyday activities with a child-centered approach. Uh, this is just such a refreshing approach for me. Uh, um, being a uh, kindergarten teacher for six years I was extremely frustrated by the curriculum that we had to use we weren't we technically weren't allowed to use kitchens we couldn't do dress up all the toys were gone and um, they treated them like little first graders and as we've said in a lot of our conversations um, online just because they can doesn't mean they should and I, I wish that that here um, and maybe school, some school districts do it, but I wish that here in the United States, this kind of learning was going on in kindergartens where the teachers were, were able to use everyday activities to build um, students' language and knowledge of concepts. Um, I think we would have fewer problems than we do now, to be honest. So that's my study. Um, and I look forward to hearing comments on it. Thanks.